Hi, I'm the Octopus Lady. You're watching Alien Ocean, and let's talk about gooey duck clams today, shall we? So, there are a couple different reasons why I'm making this video. Firstly, I want to explain why they look like this. Because... they have a look don't they? And secondly, a few weeks ago, I was procrastinating terribly by scrolling on YouTube shorts when I came across this video from cooking content creator Nick D. Giovanni, and he said this. This is one of the longest living animals in the entire animal kingdom, with an average lifespan of 140 years. And I was like, Wait, is that true? But before we find that out, let's get the usual stuff out of the way first. Gooey duck clams are part of the phylum Mollusca, the class Bivalvia, the order Adapodonta, the family Hyatelidae, and then finally the genus Panopia. Panopia. I don't know how to pronounce this. But speaking of pronunciations, yes, this is pronounced like gooey duck and not like geoduck because it comes from this Lachute seed word, which is pronounced like gooey duck. Lachute seed, by the way, is the language spoken by 13 different Native American tribes who call the area around Puget Sound in Washington state their home. And I spent way too much time listening to all the different Lachute seed words for marine animals. It's ob, it's ob, it's ob. Ob. Squeetsy. Ooh, I like that. Squeetsy. Ooh, ooh, octopus, octopus. Scabe. Ooh, I like that. Scabe. Wait, wait, hold on, hold on. Wait, 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 wait. People? Mother, mom. Oh, okay, here. Sladite. Sladite. So I'm the, I'm the scabe. Sladite. I totally butchered that, but that's my new name. Everyone call me that. That sounds so much cooler than the octopus lady. Gooey ducks have worldwide anti-tropical distribution, and anti-tropical is a fancy and honestly kind of, I don't know, aggressive way to say exist in both hemispheres, but not along the equator. Like, it makes it sound like these areas of the world are the anti-tropics! The tropics that come from the shadow realm, where fish swim in sand and coconuts eat people. I don't know, I'm just not a fan. Not a fan of this term. Finally, the oldest fossils of gooey ducks date back to the Carnian period of the Triassic, which was about 227 to 237 million years ago, making them, I guess, around the same age as as dinoflagellates. And with that, let's just jump into it. Why do these clams look like this? It's because the gooey duck is what's called an infaunal animal, which means they live in the substrates found at the bottom of a body of water. They specifically like to hang out in mud sand, mud sand, mud gravel, sand gravel, and mixed loose substrates. And they don't just magically appear there out of the blue. Gooey ducks are burrowing clams, the largest burrowing clams in the world, so they actively bury themselves in sediment. And yes, in case this isn't entirely clear, burrowing clams can move of their own volition. I feel like many people think that all bivalves are sessile or stationary creatures, and some of them are, like mussels and the non-burrowing giant clam, and some of them aren't, like scallops and the burrowing clams. That said, most burrowing clams don't move around much after they've settled somewhere, and gooey ducks actually completely lose the ability to move at all when they reach adulthood, but not all bivalves are immobile for their entire lives. Granted, I don't blame anyone for thinking that all clams are sessile because, like, I mean, you can't really tell how a clam moves just by looking at it. It ain't got no legs, or arms, or fins, or wings, or any sort of appendages typically associated with movement. But you know what they do have? A foot. And this is the key to a clam's ability to burrow. But before I go into detail about that, it's time for a quick anatomy lesson. So this is a clam. This is one half of its shell, or valve. This big blob of muscle right here is the previously mentioned foot. These things are called siphons, is how the clam pumps water into and out of its body, and for our purposes, that's everything you need to know. Told you it'd be quick. Now then, there are five-ish simple steps that a clam must take to burrow. Step one, the clam shoves its foot into the substrate. Step two, the siphons close themselves. Step three, the clam squeezes itself tightly between its valves, which does two things. A, it pushes a bunch of blood into the foot, making it swell, which anchors the foot into the substrate. And then B, it squirts a bunch of water into the surrounding sediment, which fluidizes it and makes it easier to move through. That's why the clam has to close off their 
siphons, otherwise all the water would come shooting out of there. Step four, the clam technically pulls its foot back into its shell, but since the foot is stuck in place, the clam moves towards it instead, pulling itself deeper. It has to alternate the muscles it uses while it's pulling itself down, so it basically does a rocking motion as it descends. And then step five, when it can move no further, it shoves its foot deeper into the sediment and the process starts all over again. And you know what's interesting? This is how almost all burrowing clams, well, burrow. From razor clams to gooey ducks, it's a process that stays remarkably consistent between different clam species and even different clam families. Okay, cool, octopus lady, but that still doesn't explain why gooey ducks look the way they do. I know, just stick with me. So when I was reading some random non-scientific articles about gooey ducks, I sometimes saw their siphons get compared to elephant trunks or aardvark snouts, and I was like, yeah, okay, sure. That's totally what they look like and nothing else. But it turns out this comparison is more apt than I initially gave it credit for. See, unlike other appendages you might be familiar with, the siphons of the gooey duck are fused together except at the tip, where it's split and has two openings. One opening is connected to the inhalant siphon, the other is connected to the exhalant siphon. Wait, is this one the inhalant siphon, or is this one the- it doesn't matter. Gooey ducks are suspension feeders, which are organisms that feed on stuff that is suspended in water, like plankton and bacteria and detritus. Shout out to all my Brittle Star fans who already knew this. But the water around the clam can't suspend anything, cause it's full of mud sand and sand mud. This is the water that has the food suspended in it, so how do they get to the food water? with their siphon, of course. They just shove it through all the sediment and stick the very tip of it out at the surface so they can suck in water through their inhalant siphon. Then they filter the stuff they want to eat and spit out everything they don't through their exhalant siphon. This is also how they get most of their oxygen too. They inhale oxygenated water and exhale deoxygenated water. And the reason gooey ducks do this is pretty straightforward. It's hard to get eaten by a predator when you're buried underground. And the deeper you're buried, the harder it is for predators to get to you. Typically, gooey ducks are found about 50 to 60 centimeters deep, but they have been found as deep as a meter, which is why their siphons are so thick and turgid and erect and insert other suggestive words here. They need to be strong enough to push through the substrate they're buried in and long enough to reach the surface. And burrowing protects gooey ducks so well that they can potentially live up to 140-ish years, which means Nick wasn't quite correct there. The oldest confirmed gooey duck ever found was 146 years old, this isn't that gooey duck, by the way, I couldn't find a picture of it, but that isn't the same as saying the average lifespan is 146 years. That'd be like saying the average human lifespan is 100 plus years, just because some people have managed to live that long. And by the way, you may have heard that a gooey duck was found to be 168 years old, but that came from a report that may not have been peer-reviewed, so it's not a totally reliable number. This is also not that gooey duck, I couldn't find a picture of that one either. So there we go, that's everything I wanted to talk about. Why do gooey ducks look the way they do, and is their average lifespan about 140 years? Which means I should start wrapping things up, right? But here's a funny story. I was basically almost done with this video when I was looking at a random seafood company's website for some reason, and I read this. Gooey duck's value is so high, there's proof of gangsters trading them for narcotics. And I was like, that can't possibly be true. So I went to fact check it really quick when suddenly the gaping maw of a rabbit hole appeared behind me and promptly ate me alive. Turns out there was a whole seedy criminal underworld that sprung up around these clams back in the late 90s and early 2000s, and the more I researched it, the more bananas it got. It went from gooey ducks were sometimes accepted as payment for drugs to a prominent gooey duck smuggler almost got his legs broken by a hitman. By the time I was done looking into all of this, I was nine days out from this video's deadline, and I had to talk about this. I couldn't not talk about this, but it would have added weeks of extra work to this video. So guess what, folks? We're doing a two-parter! That's right, this is part one of two on my series about gooey ducks. Hopefully the second part will come out faster than usual because all the research is done and half of the script is written, so I'm way farther ahead in my production schedule than I would normally be. So be sure to smash that subscribe button if you don't want to miss out on the exciting next installment. And while you wait, you should go check out Tier Zoo's video about Dino Kyra 
Triceratops, which talks about all the strategies this dinosaur used to survive and reproduce. This included some rather odd survival techniques, like throwing itself off a cliff to avoid getting eaten by predators, but also some more familiar techniques, like dancing to attract mates. It's beautifully animated. I was genuinely shocked at how impressive it was. I mean, look at those feathers! And Tirzu explaining everything like he's talking about a build in a video game always makes his videos charming and educational. But there's only one place you can watch this, and that's over on my streaming service, Nebula. Nebula is a prestige streaming platform where we can make fascinating and exciting content, and you don't have to worry about shady algorithms or intrusive ads messing with your enjoyment of Tier Zoo's Dino Kyrus video, which is, by the way, part of his Nebula original series called Let's Play Outside, where he talks about the unique adaptations of individual animals, and Nebula originals are shows you can only watch on Nebula. We got a bunch of other awesome Nebula originals too, like Joe Scott Presents Mysteries of the Human Body, Wendover Productions The Logistics of X, and Real Sciences Becoming Human. And hey, maybe you're already signed up for Nebula, but you've got a friend or two right now who's kinda interested in checking it out. If you didn't already know, once a month you can give guest passes to your friends and family, which means your loved ones get full access to Nebula for an entire week for free. They don't even need to give us any payment info, so they don't need to worry about us secretly charging them if they forget to cancel. And there are no restrictions on what they can watch. But if you already know you want to sign up for Nebula, then do I have a deal for you! Right now, if you sign up using my link, nebula.tv slash theoctopuslady, or by scanning this QR code, you can get 40% off an annual subscription, which is about $36 a year, or just $3 a month. And that is money that doesn't go directly into the pockets of some out-of-touch executives, but into the pockets of creators like me. So if you want access to amazing exclusive content on a top-tier streaming service that directly supports independent creators, again, you can sign up at nebula.tv slash theoctopuslady, or scan this QR code, or click my link in the description to become a member of one of the best streaming services on the internet. And with that, thanks for watching another episode of Alien Ocean. I want to give a special thanks to Michaela Blackburn, who did the animation of the clam burrowing, and Adam Lubonsky, who did the animation of the gooey duck suspension feeding. They're both animators at Nebula, and they both worked really hard to make these. I literally could not have created this video without them, like I genuinely don't know what I would have put on screen during those parts, so I just wanted to give them a shout out. And for our hopefully interesting question of the day, what other stuff do you think happens in the dark and magical realm of the Antitropics? Like maybe predators have to bury themselves in substrate to hide from gooey ducks. For some reason. Leave a comment with your answers. Extra special thanks, as always, to my patrons. I also literally could not have made this video without you, so thank you again for all your support. And if you'd like to support me, you can sign up for my Patreon over at patreon.com slash theoctopuslady, where you can get early access to videos or your name in the beautiful credits. Be sure to check me out over on Blue Sky. Don't forget to like, share, and subscribe. And until next time, this is your friendly neighborhood octopus lady reminding you that you don't have to go into space to find aliens. When I came across this video from cooking content creator Nick DGV. Nick DG. Uh oh. Nick DGV. Uh oh. Why, why, why is my mouth not working? Nick DGVovani. <laughs> cooking content creator Nick DGV. DG. DGV. <laughs> I can't. No, I can't be losing it already. I'm like two sentences into my script. This can't be happening.